podiatry divestment. We have divestment campaigns that are well known, uh, oftentimes coming from the Quaker community and the Unitarian Universalist community. And these groups are saying, you know, we're going to divest from war. We are going to divest from fossil fuels. We are going to take those stocks out of portfolios. We are going to ask schools to take those stocks out of their portfolios. Um, we're going to ask our banks and so forth uh, to divest from these earth wrecking and people harming industries. And so it's a, it's a, it's a great idea to have uh, people come together and decide that uh, we're going to divest from things that we don't want to see in the future and in invest in those things that are really the best in us. So I'm thinking about the idea of dietary divestment because, you know, here we are and we're burning fossil fuels and we're cutting down trees and we're farming land and we're breeding animals and all this is causing tremendous amounts of carbon dioxide and methane and nitrous oxide to go up into the atmosphere. And that is creating a blanket effect, a greenhouse effect. And what that leads to is that global temperatures right now are, on the average, higher than they've been any time in the past 10,000 years. So the question then becomes, well, how much of the greenhouse gas effect comes from animal farming. If we divest from animal farming, will this be a big deal as far as changing uh, our effect on the climate? A lot of scientists, I mean, the broad consensus right now is around a fourth of the greenhouse effect is caused by animal agribusiness. Uh, some experts have said that is quite a bit more, but even if you were to say, yes, it's a fourth, well, that's a very big deal. So if we have the power, the personal power, to divest from this industry, well, we could actually really get a lot done. I live in Pennsylvania, um, in this area, uh, in Chester County, Lancaster County, our, our surrounding area. We have a lot of dairy farms. And it turns out that because the summers are getting hotter and hotter, the dairy farmers are trying to figure out if they want to install air conditioning or water sprayers. So they're moving the cows inside. The free ranging thing isn't working anymore because what happens is the cows that are really cows who get really hot can't produce a lot of milk. So the farmers are trying to figure out how to further intensify the the cows into into uh, into places where they can be cooled down. And it's so absurd because. The, cows, the cow farming, the dairy farming, is what's causing a lot of the problem in the first place, and yet they're trying to figure out how to cool the cows down. Um, there is a better idea than that. You know, we can, we can mobilize through a dietary divestment campaign, and it can be done through the level of personal pledges so that we make individual commitments to divest our own dietary portfolio from the products of animal agribusiness. By the way, I use the term animal agribusiness because I reserve the word agriculture for those who like the veganic farmers who are growing plants for people to eat. I think culture makes sense when we're talking about such, such folks, such work. Um, but animal agribusiness is basically done because you know it's more profitable if you were to walk into any grocery store where are the most expensive items right we know where they are you can do i mean some folks have said that uh eating vegan is elitist or expensive but it's really not it just depends on what kind of vegan food you're going to get are you going to get a lot of processed foods and fancy packaging might be a little bit more expensive not much but uh you know, or are you going to do a lot of, of cooking on your own and do a lot with uh, lentils and, and beans and peas and so forth? So it depends on how you go about this. So there's the, the, uh, the level 
of divestment that's on a personal level from animal agribusiness, right? And then there's also the calling on different, you know, uh, just like the Quakers do uh, with, the, with the divestment from fossil fuels, going to schools, right? And, and having, asking the schools to divest and so forth. Anytime we're, we're doing any outreach, we're going to give a presentation at a university, for example, are we talking to the people who work with the dining services? And specifically on the day we're there, you know, are we making sure that nothing uh, on the table uh, fails to reflect the, the, what we want to see in the world? It, it is something that we, that's powerful that we can do today. You can and do it. We, we all can do it. It's a matter of saying, okay, I really want this. I really want to do it. It's going to make a big difference. I can start today. And hey, there's a lot of vegan. There's a lot of vegans out there today. It's easy to do. You can actually have really, really good gourmet food if you want. You know that you're not really losing anything. You're gaining everything, and you're not doing anything that's really logistically hard. Certainly not in this day and age. You know, this is, veganism is very possible to embrace immediately. So I think both of those things, right? I think not driving as much as possible. Um, as you said, to the extent that, that those who do not need to drive, maybe maybe take local hikes instead of drive to the next mountain, right? Maybe appreciate more what's right around our area. That's all important. Um, so I think both sides are really important. Mm -hmm. Both um, to not taking that stuff out of that, those pipelines that's wrecking the habitat is really important. Uh, and so as is dietary divestment from animal agribusiness. I think they both are. I just think that going vegan is something that's easier to do right now.